Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of What It Is. I am your host, Kelly McKinney of Bone High Productions. And I'm your other host, Josh Gibson from Fourth Wall Players. And this week we're here to talk about something rather dear to our hearts, which would be Monty Python coming back to the big screen. Yes! Yeah. They're going to be doing a movie adaptation of Spamalot, uh, which we're hoping still has... Tim Curry and well, Tim Curry had a stroke years. a couple of years ago, um, no, so no. he's probably not going to be able to that. do that. Okay, he's still doing voice acting. That's about all he can do right now. And well, at, at least at least David Hyde Pierce and Hank Azaria. Yeah, <laughs> right. Okay, at least those two. I, I, I'm I'm sorry, I'm unfamiliar with the other two that were part of the. They're main they're, five they're, they're stage actors, is why. Right. Yeah, yeah. That that would be why, um, but. Basically, what it's in the news about right now is that it has moved from ownership to, from Fox to now in the hands of Paramount. Yeah. So, as we look at this Playbill article and sort of talk, uh, take a look at what we've had both Play and Playbill and Variety up. Yeah. Um, and they're basically covering what made Spam a lot so popular when it was on the stage. Right. But what they don't cover, and what we're hoping to sort of delve into here, into this What It Is video, mm -hmm. is seeing as how it has went from Fox to Paramount, sort of, thank God for that. Yeah, right. We wanted to take a look at what Paramount's track record has been over the Although, past couple of years. Hugh Jackman is King Arthur. I mean, you know, that's, I ain't gonna be mad about that. Anyway. Hugh Jackman can sign other contracts. He can, you can sign them with Paramount. <laughs> right. um, but do it, Hugh. We basically want to take a look at Paramount's track record over the past couple of years mm -hmm. and get an idea of whether or not we can expect greatness again from Spamalot mm -hmm. um, coming to the big screen with Paramount. Right. Because much like, I mean, part of the charm of the Monty Python movies in general is that they are um, so indie filmed. Cheaply right? made. They're cheaply made. Yeah. They're cheaply mm -hmm. made, which is part of their charm. Right. It's, it's what makes them great. And then we're also talking about a completely different Paramount from the one that essentially we grew up with. You know, when, yeah. when I think of great Paramount movies, I think of most of what came out in the 90s um, and just because of the style of storytelling and the fact right. that they had to use practical effects right. and everything else. So, yeah, so with Paramount, with Paramount they did most recently, they had Terminator Dark Fate. We've got Top Gun Maverick in the works, so mm -hmm. they've got the highest paid stint money in Hollywood working on stuff. Yeah. Uh, defending Jacob, we love Chris Evans, right? Especially in his non... I mean, I love him as Captain America, yeah, but I sure. like seeing him in his non-Captain America series roles. Right. Well, um, it, it's, it's very interesting to me that it's becoming, like... When Chris Evans first started playing Captain America, I didn't see like this super charismatic guy. I just saw someone who played mm -hmm. Captain, who played the good guy in an entertaining fashion. Mm -hmm. Because the inner guy, the good guy, can be so boring to yes. just always be the stoic doing the, the right. right thing. But when he did the right thing, you felt it. Right. right? Oh God, yeah. Uh huh. It's becoming more and more apparent to me that that is even less because of the writing. Oh, it's because it's because of him. Totally. Because he's so charismatic on screen, mm -hmm. the way that I think of Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Like you could see him. You could see him thinking, and when he's in roles. Yeah, he's very expressive. Mm -hmm. you, yes, yes. Like he, we see Chris Evans, but we also see the character. Right. And that's right. What's really amazing. yeah, he doesn't outshine the character he's playing. Right. Now. Uh, as far as we know, Chris Evans is not in spam a lot. <laughs> Although, I wouldn't be mad about it. I would not be upset about it whatsoever. <laughs> um, but Defending Jacob seems to be a television series that Paramount um, is involved with that has Chris Evans in it. We also have shows like Like a Boss. They did, um, they're, or at least working on having in theaters April 23rd, A Quiet Place Part 2. Part 2? Uh-huh. Um, and then in July is Top Gun Maverick, which we already saw, talked about. They also played a part in Sonic the Hedgehog. Mm -hmm. So they've got one strike against them so far. <laughs> a lot of people like that movie. Do you just not like it? I didn't. I haven't um, seen it yet, so I, I, I didn't. Know. Which is a real shame because I love Jim Carrey. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to like it, mm -hmm. uh, but it was the story. It was how 
why change a story so much that you have to relearn the lore yeah, of I don't, something? I, I don't, don't really. Get it. I don't like it when you take kid shows like that that are kind of batshit insane and in their own creative world or whatever, and you try to ground it. Oh, well, this is all happening. Like he goes through a dimensional portal. And he's on Earth. Like, the Smurfs did that, too. And it's just like, well, why? Why? Let him be Smurfs. You know? Yeah. Like, jeez. At least not the, the first movie, you know? Like, uh, I don't know. I don't even know. I... And, well, and did I miss it as a kid? The chipmunks weren't rock stars, right? They were just chipmunks. They were just chipmunks. Right. Yeah. They happened to I forgot about have that. a great Christmas album, but why make the movies all yeah, about I've... them having a music career? Yeah, so I, I, I forgot about that movie, but you're right. Yeah. Uh, Gar well, Garfield is always a Garfield, but Garfield's always a Garfield. Um, yeah. At least they didn't give him. No, but I, I say if they're gonna make a Sonic, um, they should they should a Sonic movie franchise. They need to base the story off of the dark dystopian '90s cartoon, um, whereas like Sonic and a bunch of freedom fighters going against an already robotic controlled world. Right. That was awesome. Yeah. Yes. Um. Probably not kid friendly today, though, but no, <laughs> was, no, yeah, maybe not. <laughs> that was what we watched. <laughs> I'm like, okay, so like a boss. Um, I refuse to watch anything with Tif Tiffany Haddish in it, even though I've seen most really? of what she's been in. Hmm. I, that doesn't make any sense. I have a crush on her. I don't like. I refuse to I watch things with her. I, I, I refuse. To, I refuse to be. I refuse to be starstruck looking at the screen. I like Rose and Byrne. Unable to. Unable to pay attention mm -hmm. to the storyline, mm -hmm. so, so yeah. So I don't want. Sorry, Tiffany. Hit me up or whatever. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hit me up or whatever. But yeah. So what we have is a mixture of gritty, but I don't see anything that suggests that they'll tone down the budget to match that, what we want from Spam. That's kind of my worry. Like I don't mind them like putting money into like making the sound crisp and stuff like that. Mm. Um, I just don't want there to be like CGI castles and I mean again like you, like we said the appeal of both the original Unless movie it's hilariously bad CGI castle yeah, yeah, okay. that that's that, that's that might point. be okay yeah right. if if they do it right but like the point of both the original uh Holy Grail movie and even I don't want to say point but the appeal and even the 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 Broadway version or the play version of Spamalot is the fact that it's cheap yeah so I just don't want them overreaching and turning it into some abomination like cats or right, right you right, know right, right, right. like it's it's a not supposed to be complicated you know it's not supposed to be a big spectacle like it's just supposed to be a, a small it's supposed to be funny funny you yeah. know musical with with some, with some good musical numbers in it too so right and that's that's the that's another key to this on screen translation is having the music the music be front the music and comedy front and center like with any play and music mm -hmm, the, mm -hmm. the dialogue and the music is everything yeah, it should be so, crisp and yeah right and so like if just uh, I, I just hope, do it right guys yeah, I, hope, I hope whoever signed over the rights to this was like you're keeping my script to the T every letter how it is and if it doesn't translate on well, screen like I, that you're getting sued yeah and in that in that vein I kind of hope Eric Idle still works on it um, although I hear a lot that he's kind of a douchebag um, like I you know he and John Cleese do not get along at all like at all and uh, so but anyway uh yeah, no, I, I'm i excited to see it, and I, I'm excited to see who they cast. I hope it's not either A, a bunch of mega stars who really aren't singers, right? or B, a bunch of... a bunch of Too young. Uh, yeah, I yeah, like, like I, I don't want to see, like... I like Zac... I'm okay with Zac Efron, but I don't want to see, like, Zac Efron and, yeah, right. you know... Uh, Love Zac Efron. Don't want to see him in spam a lot. Unless, um, I mean, he could be one of the smaller characters or whatever, but like if he was like King Arthur, I would not want to see that. Uh, Sorry. I think it would be really great to have. Um, I think Neil Patrick Harris would be great. <laughs> and Hugh Jackman. Um, ben Affleck's buddy. Matt Damon? Matt Damon needs to just have, throw one of those random cameos in there. Okay. He needs to be like a peasant in Spamalot. Right, okay. Fair I enough. It would be hilarious. It would be, um, be awesome. Another one I'd like to see, and he's kind of getting a bigger name now, is that Andrew Rennell's. Sort of. Well, there's one of them that doesn't sing at all. Be in, 
like the 40s. Right, yeah, there's, there's like one of them that doesn't have any solos. Uh, the guy in the movie, uh, God, well, I can't remember his name, he's the only knight, I can't remember his name. The one that um, did the whole science thing, like if, if she weighed less than a duck, <laughs> she yes, was a witch, yes, that guy. Yeah. Like, he doesn't have any solos at all. Like he, <laughs> there's like there's like a quartet song that he's part of, and that's like about it. Right. Like he's in some choruses. So I mean that could be Matt Damon. There you go. Um yeah. yeah, so what do you guys think? Like what are your guys' fantasy castings for Spam a lot? Yeah, fantasy castings mm -hmm. for Spam a lot and will Paramount be able to keep it simple? Yeah. Right? Keep it simple, stupid. Keep it simple. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. I see you've made it to the end play, so you must not be completely sick of my voice. And for that, I recommend you check out the Get to the Point Review podcast. You will find it in a link in the description below. It's available on a number of podcast platforms where we give our Get to the Point style review over a number of topics, from anything from TV, films, movies, and culture.